the Phantom Zone. Uh, we're here with special guest Andy Lee Griffin Seitz. Uh, Andy, do you want to say something so people know what your voice sounds like? Hey. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I've been choking back laughter since the voice started. You yeah, it. that's him. I'm hoping to have four, as you already know. Fuck okay, X-Men Apocalypse. Um, with, me, with me, I have Connor McGraw. Hey. Uh, hi. I what, hey. <laughs> Just, just fuck her out of here. <laughs> and I have Alan Muir. You mean the Alan Muir? Yeah, Twitter's Alan Muir. Uh, and I also have Arlen A. Haro with us. Hey, what's up? Pronounced Haro. <clears throat> yep. Game Taro. Uh, we watched Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wait, this is oh, a Wonder yeah, Woman episode? Uh, <laughs> this is a Wonder Woman episode, yes. Uh, I thought this was a Dark Knight episode. Arlen. Yes. <laughs> oh, you'll be back for that one. Wait, hold on, hold on. I have, I have a question to get out of the, out of the way. Yes. Am, am I the most ethnic person that has ever been on this podcast? Yes. Probably. We are all the tastiest of white people. Yeah, yeah. I think you're the first guest. I mean, Alan's Jewish, so that's about as ethnic as we get. Wow. Yeah. But I, I'm technically albino. Wow. Oh uh, Well, I guess that is pretty rare. So. <laughs> wow, okay. I don't, I don't know how ethnic that is, Alan, but okay. Alan was a diversity hire. I thought we were going to be talking about Wonder Woman, guys. Yeah, we're, we're the I mean, we, we get to it. It's just through a layer of nonsense first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Eventually, we'll get to the, the topic at hand. Like, I mean, while, while we have Wonder Woman on the topic, uh, yeah, zero yeah, stars. Yeah, not a single person yeah, got punched yeah, in the dick yeah, in this yeah, movie. Down, 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 down. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Okay. I feel like we should start by saying Andy, if you don't know who Andy is. Um, he is, I don't know, Hunter, would you say he's the biggest DC fan we know? No, don't put yes. that on me. <laughs> I think he's one of the biggest we know. <laughs> like, oh, you're in good. You're in good company then. Like his blood is blue and white. Um, yeah, you should get that checked out. What? <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know. That sounds very unhealthy. <laughs> what, is <that? laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it means I don't know, dude. Don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, yeah. So I got all the credentials out of the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that, that's credentials? Wow. Well, I mean, Andy's also, I mean, I don't know, I don't know now, but Andy's defended BVS many times. Um, I'm not sure about recently if you have, if your feelings have changed over time, but I feel like it's important for people to know. You're, oh, there's that dull blade I can I, my throat. I want to right. say um, I was super excited about that movie. There are a mm. lot of things I do really enjoy. I can objectively say that that movie is bad. Yeah, I think a lot of us actually share that opinion. Yeah. In like, all fairness and seriousness, jokes aside, like I, I rag on the Martha shit left and right, but there's things about that I, movie I really that's enjoy. That's actually and one of the things I like about the movie. <sighs> we have a <laughs> Wow. Poor, poorly executed, though. Mm. Yes, that's the, I that's can the agree problem. with that. The execution is trash. I, I think the, the the intention is there. I think it's something that he could have done I, a lot better. That was a weird moment. We'll get to obviously Wonder Woman in a minute, but uh, it happened. And for a second, I was like, "Oh, Zack Snyder, you kind of got me with some trivia I wasn't aware of." And then as it progressed and just was finished, I was like, "That was the silliest thing I've ever fucking seen." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "He said his mom's name, and Batman had a nervous breakdown." <laughs> <laughs> great Wonder Woman podcast. Yeah, this, this it is. Great. Well, in Batman vs Superman was probably the shiniest part of the whole film, which is Wonder Woman showing up. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Gal Gadot. She, yes, and then that Thank guitar theme picked up, and I was like, "All right, you got me back." Yep. That's actually not a guitar. That's a, a cello. Is that? Yeah. Did you do the electric, theme song for Wonder Woman? Cello. Did what? you do the theme song for Wonder Woman? I did it earlier. Wow. No, I mean, did you did you record it? Because it that's that's a perfect rendition. Oh, I see. You're doing you're doing a bit right now. Yeah, I'm doing a bit. I hate to break it to you, oh. but everything we do is one we long exacerbation. That's what we bit. do here. We do bits, political satire, and toilet humor. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. We, we do political satire. I thought it was just toilet humor. It's mostly that's what just I'm toilet doing. humor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we all saw Wonder Woman. I'm pretty sure all of us liked it. Yeah, I liked yeah. it. I loved it. Yeah, I cried. 
I've said we didn't deserve it multiple times by Absolutely. now. So. <laughs> that, that line in early on in the movie where uh, Hippolyta says to Diana, they don't deserve you. I was like, no, we don't. <laughs> Please. Nope. We don't. This is too good for us. Yep. Uh, I mean, I think everyone can easily say after BVS came out, we're all like, well, the cinematic universe is doomed. Oh yeah, yeah. and then and I think a lot of pressure was like, in this movie. Huh. And then, well, I I was I was hoping this movie would be as good, but then like, the reviews were rolling out. I was like, <laughs> nice joke, everybody. Yeah, I, I wow. thought it was a practical joke, also. So, <clears throat> and I also love DC, and that says a lot for how much faith I was putting in these movies. And I'm glad to be proven wrong. I mean, although I, think... I feel like coming, I feel like later this year, I think Spider Man Homecoming is gonna suck. Cause I think I've seen the whole film already, but. Um, That's besides the point. Well, they there are a few surprises. Like, um, I'm not going to tell you I got an inside scoop, but um, I think a big name actor is going to be in it. We may have seen him before, and wearing a a suit of iron. <laughs> but uh, that's all I'll, I'll say. Oh Whoa. man, that'd be so cool if Iron Man showed up. I hope he's in it for like maybe five minutes. I hope. No, I just I just say yeah, Iron Man. Ah, man, if he's like a co-star, that might be a little disappointing. I sign a NDA, and you're going to get me. They're going to break my wrists. <laughs> just your, That's a weird punishment. Yeah, just your wrists? Yeah. Just your, just... So I can't hold this gonna, microphone. Gonna, and I think it's how you're going to misery you, like fucking <laughs> Kathy Bates. Get the she, wooden block. Avi Arraz going to show up to your house and be like, I told you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I don't know why he's Italian all of a sudden, but no, he's like Israeli, so he should have <laughs> Gal Gadot's accent. Gal Gadot show up and beat the shit out of you. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Can we can we can we talk about how similar this movie is to Captain America: First Avenger? Oh, yeah, it's very I mean, similar. Uh, like, yeah, like even, even has a Steve scene. character who flies a plane and and, and, <laughs> and yeah. himself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad someone else did that because like played by Chris. <laughs> <laughs> they really are the same movie. Um... <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm really glad that they, like, you know, went a bit outside of the Wonder Woman, like, origin story and put it in World War One, Because yeah. that, yeah. I, that, like, did a lot to separate it from uh, I think, I think it's First Avenger. Like, yeah, it did. It was weird when Red Skull showed up, though. That was, yeah, um, was really that was strange. When Hugo Weeping showed up and he was like, I'm shutting this bit down right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andy. <laughs> uh, no, I like the fact it was World War One because World War One isn't really touched on enough in film as it is. It's we World War One. World War One. World War One. Yeah. Anyway, uh, no, everything is World War Two. Like it's the yeah. most like oversaturated portion of you know, I guess war history if you want to say call it that. Yeah. Well, it's because it's easy. It's like oh, Nazis. Those are bad guys. <laughs> Well, it's also nothing. There's nothing romantic about World War One. It's people in mud pits just shooting yeah. each other for yeah, days on end. Two trenches. Just, they made this movie yeah. romantic. Yeah, yeah, they did. They made World War. Yeah. They found no, the way. No Man's Land sequence is incredible, and that's kind of when the movie had me. Yeah. I think I said it uh, earlier. It was Fury Road levels of okay, you got me. Yep. Yeah. I'm in. Uh, Gal Gadot, I thought was great. Uh, yep. Yeah. I haven't really right. haven't seen her Jeez. do anything outside of. Furious and uh, BBS, so yeah, she is uh, infuriatingly beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, on but... top of that, I also I want to mention Robin Wright Penn because it, you can yeah. blink and not realize it's her because she's mm-hmm. gone from Princess Buttercup to a woman with more muscles in her shoulders than I have in my whole body. Yeah, she'll she murder could, me with like her pinky. Terrifying looking in this movie, and it's awesome. Yeah, she could kill all of us easily. Oh. Not me. Like, <laughs> nah, you go first. You put up a fight. <laughs> I think uh, you derail the show. Uh, Continue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me. We derail the show on our own plenty of times. We don't need guests to do that. We are perfectly yeah. capable of that on our own. <clears throat> Alan. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now that Chris is in here, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's getting tense. Um, on, Alan. We're gonna, we will eat each other. Yep. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, that mascara was cool as shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like the entire intro sequence all together. Yeah, that entire scene where like the the German sh- soldiers are discovering about the veil thing. Like, oh, that was mm-hmm. rad. Yeah, that was fucking yeah. sick. Also, was did that woman really do a backflip of a horse and shoot a bow and arrow? Because that looked practical as hell. I think she I, did. I, I bet she did. 
That was like, which is what, insane. Which is Logan, where you're like, did they really just throw that little girl at somebody, or was that CGI? I can't really tell. Did he really just drive over a train track while the train was coming? Yeah, it's a, it was a, it was impressive. No, I like, I know, I know some people were complaining about the slowdown stuff, but I thought it was really cool, and basically every shot I saw it in is great. Yeah. yeah. And you're gonna like kind of take a Zack Snyder trope and apply it somewhere else? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's interesting because. I feel like this movie uses a lot of Zack Snyder tropes, but it uses them the right amount um, that they're supposed to be used. Like, there's the right amount of that dark, gritty aesthetic because it's in a place where that aesthetic makes sense. It's not everywhere. Like, if the mascara looked like that, we would have been bored by that look. Yeah, but if the whole no, film had, yeah. like, the Man of Steel washed-out color tone, it wouldn't look that good. But even the World War One setting, like, it had a kind of, like, weird, rusty tone mm-hmm. but it was it was a bit more vibrant it also kind yeah. of fit cuz like yeah it's like the world is kind of like fucked at the moment like like they're they, it it is kind of gray and like depressing and really sad to like like even like uh when they're when they're boating into uh London a wonder woman goes it looks it's horrible it's hideous <laughs> yep. yeah, it's hideous like yeah, it's yeah. hilarious because because even like you can watch me like Sherlock Holmes and go, this place looks disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You feel like you catch something looking at the screen, yeah. which is weird because we just watched League of Extraordinary Gentlemen yesterday and it kind of has the same feeling. Uh, uh, can we not? <laughs> Hunter's like the only um, one of us who who was like miserable having to rewatch that, League. I really don't like that movie. I mean, I didn't like it, but I also didn't hate it this time. Yeah. It's so I did have somebody in Pixels, like, I, I called it terrible, and someone was like, it's terribly great. I was like, okay, you pipe down. <laughs> you calm down. Yeah, you, you, sir, you're out of control. Uh, I like it. It didn't feel, this still also didn't feel like kind of your run-of-the-mill origin story, because we kind of, it brisks through her leaving the Mysterio, and we get all of her kicking ass during World War One. Mm-hmm. I also was not expecting David Thewlis to be Ares at all. Yeah, yeah because that it's, me Because it's... Because it's fucking David Thewlis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, dude, Remus like, Lupin. He's the most yeah, unassuming yeah. guy in Hollywood. Shouts out. Yeah, and that's not even the kind favorite. of villain that he plays either. He has yeah. my favorite uh, uh, visual thing in the whole movie is when he like he creates the eye holes in his armor. Oh, that is so, so cool. cool. Yeah, I was did, like, yeah, did he shit. like melt away? He burned the metal away with his fingers? Like, yes. Some shit like yeah. that. Yeah, it was awesome looking. And it was also like, I was expecting, like, Thulis, the actor, to kind of just disappear that. once the armor showed up. Yeah. And there were shots where I see, like, I'm like, I, I'm looking, I'm like, you were in Dragonheart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <honestly. laughs> I really did the, uh, the flashback, and it's just him, like, shirtless, but still with that mustache. <laughs> yeah, that's where it got a little goofy for <laughs> like me. in the cave. He's still got the, the World War II Englishman movie. mustache. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was fully expecting it to be Danny Houston because Danny Houston is like he's just he's bad guy. His mm-hmm. yeah. career purpose is to be bad guy. And that's what I thought that the purple pills were leading up to. Like they said that uh Ares was injured. So I thought, okay, well the purple pills are a thing to like help him recover or whatever because he's still I don't know, broken from his battle with Zeus. So that I thought that was a really well done misdirect. And I kept thinking, okay, what But they didn't, didn't I... that. Yeah, they didn't. But I was kind of okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay I with guess. it too. I want, I want on record. They don't have to explain everything. Yeah, like, and for yeah, a second, yeah. for a second, I was confused as to who was going to be who. If he was going to be Ares, if uh, Houston was going to be Ares, and then for a split second, I thought Doctor Poison was going to be Ares. Um, which I actually think would have been a better reveal. Be if, like, that would have been interesting. I also, I was laughing at the end when she's, like, wrecking Danny Houston <laughs> shit. And then she murders him on top of the house. She's like, oh, I beat Ares. And it's just, like, some dude who just fucking destroyed. <laughs> I mean, so do I, you think was... I... Annihilates that guy. So Can do I... you think that was Venom? Venom? Go ahead, Alan. Oh, sorry, Alan. Uh, am I the only one who's noticed that that uh, Dr. Scientist? Dr. Who? Doctor what? I got the reference in, guys. Doctor Scientist. I got the reference in. Doctor oh, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that that's too far for Andy. Doctor Scientist Poison person. 
Dr. Mm -hmm. Poison. Uh, what was wrong with her face? It was an injury from whatever. That's how they... Yeah. It's, that's kind of a... It was a popular... That was problem. a cool mask. Yeah, that's cool yeah. as shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. It reminds me of... Uh, what's his face from Boardwalk Empire? Uh, you mean John Harrow? Yes. Or Richard that's... Harrow. Yeah. It's who, a goes on, who goes on a epic Punisher killing spree at the end of... I can't remember which season it is, but he just walks into some mobster's house and just guns down everybody he sees. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking I at wonder... Thanks for spoiling on that show... I'm looking at a picture of the Golden Age Dr. Poison, and they got it pretty close. Yeah. Like, really close. Do what now? The, the Golden Age uh, Dr. Poison looks almost exactly like the actress in the movie. Mm. Well, Ares looks... I mean, for a minute, I thought they were just going to go with David Thewlis as, like, here I am, I'm Ares. Yeah. And then he was in armor, I'm like, oh, you guys did the thing. <laughs> yep. You did the thing. He's, he's in all horny armor, and all it's cool, it's cool and everything. Throwing shit at her? The swords were great. I have a question about, like, I... It's been a while since I've seen the episode of Justice League. Or the episode of Justice League that... I think it may have been unlimited. I have never seen this episode, I guarantee you. So go ahead. Well, I'm here. I'm listening to you. I got you. <laughs> it was the episode with Hawk and Dove and Wonder Woman. Yes. Ares was in that one, right? Yeah, I think so. Like, like he cool. had, um, I'm blanking on the, uh... He's the, like a Greek scientist, right? Like a, or like a Greek wizard or something? I know what episode you're talking about. Because Ares is in a couple episodes. He's in the Wonder Woman, like when they go back to Themyscira three-parter, I think? Yeah. And then he shows up again, and he's, like, built this machine that can, like, destroy everything, and it's unstoppable. Yeah, they... that episode. It's the one that was fueled by uh, man's hatred, I think. Yeah. 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 And aggression. Did he have the suit, the armor on in, the, in any of the episodes he was on? He did have the armor on in his first episode, at but least. I don't think... Do we see him with a helmet? Because I remember him mostly just, you know, blonde. Yeah, he looked well, like he first shows up with the helmet. Like he, okay. he, he first shows up, and then the rest of the time, it's just hair and stuff. I think. I, We're dragging, um, guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, yeah, I was going to say. Bit. My bad. Um, but yeah, Justice no, League, I just, great I wasn't TV expected... show. I, I've only watched maybe the first few episodes. Um, I don't really watch a whole lot of anime first few episodes, anymore. Not that great. Oh, that's probably why. Um, no, I wasn't expecting him to be, look like, I guess, the Injustice Ares, which is just this, you know, ridiculous looking armor set. Oh, yeah. But then he did yes. show up and he looked cool as shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, any sequence of the lasso was awesome. Thought that that oh, presentation yeah. that was great. And I love the way that they set it up. Like it's just him. When Chris Pine first gets there and they wrap him up and he's just like struggling to lie because it hurts so much. It's like this really burns. Mm -hmm. Also, I finally get Ed's uh, Ed's handle in the chat. Chris Pine's watch. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Not that gag was There's really a lot of dick jokes in this. <laughs> yeah, there like, are. I, I think Zack Snyder had something to do with that. He wrote I'm above this, average. He was involved. He wrote the story. The story outline. Yeah. yeah. Weird. It might it might be a through line. I mean, we do open Man of Steel by seeing Superman's penis because that's a thing that we needed to see again. Did we? Re I remember that at all. The first Superman does the same thing. If you watch it again, <laughs> that's why uh, I have no... not watched it since. I do not want and... to see that. What's wrong with penises? It's well, I mean, underage. Yeah, it's a child penis, so it's a little, no, it's a little Alan, bit creepier. Alan, you're reasoning for not watching Man. Oh, Steel, I remember what you're silly. talking about. Yeah, okay. and then you see, you I see a baby that. penis in Man of, Spe Man of Steel. You see baby let's, let's, okay, let's yeah. do this conversation. Let's, let's not. <laughs> I don't want to be associated with baby penis talk. Baby dog. No, that's gonna that's gonna be in the title of this episode. So you <laughs> might as well. Cal uh, baby dick. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> um, to all my future and. Past employers, the views of my co-hosts do not 
No, nah, don't try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, go ahead and put your name I, in. The I am not co signing. This podcast of your trial. What they're saying. Uh, I've long since abandoned any notion of uh, pretending that this podcast will affect my work because no one there listens to any podcast ever. Oh, I'm getting a new job. Somebody listen, Somebody I work with listens to the show. Fuck. Hey, how's it going? Connor's new co-worker. <laughs> Hello. Ah, hi. I, I can't. I, think it's, I believe his name... Uh, well, I won't mention his name on the air. Uh, yeah, Wonder Woman. Hi, yeah. Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I meet him in person. He's like, "That's my real, real first name." <laughs> dear, uh, yeah, Connor, no, I, dear Connor's yeah. future colleague, join the goddamn group. Okay. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> Alan showing no tact. I think he follows all of you on Twitter. Actually, he probably yeah. does. Actually. Anyway, so Wonder Woman. Uh, I really liked the casting of Gal Gadot. I wasn't like too sure about it, I, even after uh, getting out of BBS, just because mm. you know, we didn't see very much of her. But like, pretty soon in throughout this movie, I knew that, like she was. I could not have chosen someone better. Uh, I yeah. think like just just on her smile alone, like it's so soft and reassuring. Mm-hmm. But there's still like that fire there. She also looks petite, like at a glance. But then you see her get physical. You're like, no, she could fuck my world up. Yeah, she yeah. destroy us. There's also the the ice cream scene they they took right out of the comics. Okay, uh, I was gonna say something about how she reacted to some things. I thought it was like and... it was precious both times. Where she's like, a baby. Yeah. It's so <laughs> great. I almost start crying. <laughs> yeah. And you the know ice that cream, she's a mom. The line right. about the ice cream thing. She was like, "You should be so proud of yourself." I'm like, "That's the most motherly thing, I've, motherly thing a superhero has ever said." So good. It's the most reassuring thing. <sighs> we don't deserve her. We really no, don't. Absolutely not. She's a precious cinnamon roll. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter going full Tumblr girl there for a second. Um, yeah. I think that's what kind of elevates this above a lot of uh, superhero movies we've seen. Like, there's a lot of uh, like genuine uh inspirational stuff that comes from her specifically mm-hmm. yeah um, and it kind of lifts itself above Absolutely. the especially in the dc movies above the very bleak most, tone they've set mm-hmm. uh even i mean civil war got pretty bleak so i mean this was a nice <laughs> breath of fresh air where you have a character who's kind of like who's enamored by little things mm-hmm. yeah and refuses to quit it was awesome yeah and then there's a there's an optimism to this movie that I don't think we've really had and a, and a message that is so clear. And again, I don't think that happens as much. Like among the things that you can complain about when it comes to the MCU is none of the movies really have like individual messages that you walk no. away with and you say, "Huh, I, I really mm-hmm. have to think about what that was telling me." And this movie, it does. It has a very reassuring message, but it also makes some good points about love and about hope and how those two things are connected and um, then on the opposite of the love message like the the bit they have between her and steve where she's like no i stopped it he's like no he's like listen to me he's like humanity sucks yep he's like we're all he's like maybe we're all just terrible and like and there's nothing you can do about that and that's that's nihilistic but true right but he even says but we are we all are and all we yeah. can do is try and yeah so yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in this movie. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of great stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna correct you on that. True, true. And we it takes a minute to get to the, the any action, but once you get there, man, the wait is so worth it. Oh shit! Because yeah. every fight sequence with Diana was just the coolest shit. I oh yeah, the choreography was so great. Hours. And it was clear. It was. It wasn't these yeah. hyper close shaky clear. cam bullshit fights that mm-hmm. I've come to detest uh, from. <laughs> you know, Hollywood filmmaking where it's like, he's got throw punch. We'll make sure there's 17 edits and you're up close and you can see his knuckles. Mm. Yep. No more Matt Damon up in this shed. Uh, um, yeah. Wait, Connor, yeah. Connor, you mean that shot from the Luke Cage trailer? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's a good, well, I mean, that's a, that's like an effect shot. I mean, like a fist fight now is like, get 18 cameras in there, uh, shake them up to make it feel like you're being throttled uh, so you can't make anything out. That's one of my biggest problems with, like, the fight sequence in, like, The Dark Knight. I get that he's supposed to look fast, but I can't <laughs> physically see what's happening. 
<laughs> you put that long sigh away. I love that movie, all right? I'm allowed to have problems with it. Yeah, we can love movies and have problems with them. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me his voice isn't silly. I fucking dare you. That's a great sound. <laughs> <laughs> You sound like an old cat. <laughs> he sounds like the the noises the ghosts make in The Conjuring. He, for a second, kind of sounded like Jared Leto in Suicide Squad, and he was purring. <laughs> Can we not? God, I, I hated him so much. All that um, shit's gonna get your <laughs> I think that's another fair comparison. I think J- Jay, Jay Leno is my favorite Joker. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Jorker, well, sorry. I've been Joker, Joker. confirmed for Cuck. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving. They couldn't just give me Willem Dafoe as Joker. They had to give me Jared Leto. Why? Um, but no, I guess that's also fair to bring up Suicide Squad at this point because Suicide Squad's tone was all over the fucking place. Yep. In comparison to this, it's it was consistent the entire time. Consistent. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Isn't it great? Isn't it wonderful to have a DC movie conversation in 2017 about something that doesn't suck? Yeah. Yeah. It's really it. nice. Oh, uh, I, I have plenty of conversations about DC movies that don't suck. This year, namely, yeah, I've had, I've had, yeah, this year I've had those <laughs> conversations. Dark Knight. Dark Knight came out in '08. I mean, yep, in, but I geez, talked about this year. He's like, yep, it's still nine relevant. years old. <laughs> yep. A oh, child, nine years old. A child was born the day the Dark Knight came out. And it is celebrating its ninth birthday in one month or so. Uh, Thanks, Dr. I, Math. You know, I'm going to put Alan Blast here. Alan said Dark Knight Rises is a piece of shit last night, and I called him out for it. That movie yeah. is great. Way yeah, better than that good. Piece, man. I, I, you know, I'm calling someone out right now. Okay. Gregory Miller. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Batman. He said, he said Batman v Superman is better than Dark Knight Rises. What the fuck? Now I'm leaning yeah. back. I know what I'm going to say to Greg Miller next time I see him. Yeah, this Hang is on. one of the reasons I don't uh-huh. enjoy Greg Miller that much. Because um, wow. he makes okay. really dumb Listen, songs like that. You're, you're ruining the call out. I can't, now I can't show him this episode because you said bad things about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he wants to come he's, at me specifically. I'll, I'll tell him how Greg, much I really... Greg, if you're listening to this in 20 years... Because I know you will be, because I'm going to be on this podcast so much. It's just going to bring so much popularity to it. Um, I just want you to know uh, the words of who, wait, I don't even know who said whatever. I You're great, Greg. <laughs> we love you, Greg. I have to go on a Greg Miller tangent, but when he's serious and he's actually saying things with meaning, I actually don't despise him. Um, when he's just trying to joke around on camera to get attention, and he's acting like a whiny child, that's wow. when I just like. I don't. So, yeah. I'm trying to hear this. Yeah, yeah. Cut that out. Cut it out. He edits this. I I Arlen does. He's <laughs> gonna. <laughs> Arlen cut this out. I don't want to be associated with this. Either cut that out or cut me out. <laughs> nope. Too late. We're putting your face at the fucking the promo image. Yep. It's the Andy show. I yeah. can see. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, it was we, a different I, I mean, go ahead. We've got nothing to give you, so sue away. <laughs> what do you guys do with the name that somebody else also already has? Good luck. <laughs> We're the second Phantom Zone podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is most, a weird show, guys. This is the most self depreciating episode we've ever show. done. <laughs> this came out great. <laughs> This is really oh, I think now since, since I'm already here, uh, Arlen, I should lay out conditions for my presence. Uh, <laughs> so, number one, you have to call this Fam Zone Podcast number one. Um, <laughs> number two, uh, you're putting my name first. Uh, oh, if you can't put my I, name first, just put, just put my, my name yes, for yes, Hunter. Right now. Wait, what? Well, just, it, it, just... Hold on, I'm on the with my conditions. Can you please... <laughs> And I don't, I don't come to your show and interrupt you, so I really appreciate Wait, you on. don't come and interrupt me. Okay, thank you. I'm continuing. Okay, condition number three. Uh, if Hunter, if I see that his name comes before mine, I'm... <sighs> condition number four. Uh, I, I just want, I just want, I want to wake up to a Facebook post tomorrow that just says thank you. You don't even have to tag me. 
in it. I just, <laughs> I just need that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Wonder Woman worry. came out 2017. Uh, <sighs> I'm still directed by Patricia Jenkins. <laughs> okay, let's. I'm, I'm talking Patty Jenkins. I haven't seen Monster, so I'm not familiar with her work at all. Um, Me either. Same, actually. So, th- I mean, th- she didn't direct Thor too, correct? Or she, she left. She left because she saw she saw problems on the horizon. Uh, those are her words. She was like, to the T. <laughs> nice. No. I'm I'm hell yeah. Because if you've seen Thor Dark, where'd you go? Oh. Because yeah. I saw problems on the horizon when trailers were coming out. Uh, oh, wow. I, I, can, I can pretty much guarantee that uh, seeing it and not seeing it are pretty much the same experience. Yeah. All it's you need to know it. is... You see it and go, I just lost two hours. I'm not even sure why. Yeah. The only thing you walk away from that movie with is, oh, so that's what happens when you try just a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, it's good to know. This is what because, this is what staying the course looks like. Because, as we all know, my favorite thing is in a film when a character gets out of it, gets out of a problem, gets out of a situation, just by trying a little bit harder. This is a little thing. You it's can't like, do it. Uh, that, that reminds me of the great Disney Channel movie Brink, where uh, oh Brink's little God. sister, they're like at the climax of the movie, the final, and Brink, you know, he just can't do it. Yeah. Brink, mm-hmm. Brink doesn't know what to do. And then his sister, she just goes, skate harder. Or skate better, or whatever she says. Or, guess what? Just he skates better. better. Just skate better. Jesus. I like that you're calling the main character Brink, even though I don't remember his name either. Was that, would that imply that Vin Diesel's character in the Fast and Furious movies is just named Fast? Yeah, his name's Fast. No, the, he's called Brink. And, and his friends are the nickname. Furious. And friend was, his friends are the Furious. No, that's his nickname, is Brink. In God Brink? Damn it. Yes. It's been, yet. Yeah, okay, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Brink since I was in sixth grade, all right? Okay, so moving on, Mr. Wrong. <laughs> Wait, Andy, hang on, how old are you? 19. Fucking shit, God I'm damn. no longer the youngest one here. <sighs> Hang on, I have to process this. <laughs> Somebody else in this show who makes me feel like a fucking old ass man. You're welcome, Connor. Oh, shut up. Hey, one of them's greater, buddy. Let's get off my age. Anyway, shout out to my dude Andy Brinker. Aka Brink. Sorry, we don't have to talk about that movie anymore. I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> We're talking Why about do I? Let's get fucking back to the Wonder Woman. The title of this episode would be called Wonder Woman with a question mark. <laughs> yeah, it, it might end up being that. <laughs> Andy, Andy, do you want to start a uh, Brink podcast? Uh, with you? Yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Jesus I'll just fuck Chris. <laughs> sure. This fucking corpse is your answer. <laughs> with you? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we can have a 300 episode Brink podcast. We just watch Brink. We talk about Walter Jones and how it. Uh, I want to talk about Wonder Woman right now. What are you doing? Okay. Yeah, what are we, yeah. What are we doing? Anyways, uh, this movie. So, like, you know, I'm I'm well known by two of the people here. Uh, so they're very familiar with my excitement that I have for the, all things DC. Yeah. For the most part. Uh, I get, like, just super, like, biased and stuff. I have this... I don't know. But I wasn't feeling that ahead of this movie, I guess, after Suicide Squad. And just, I don't know, all the, you know, director changes for upcoming movies like The Flash and stuff like oh, that. I was like, out. I don't... I don't, I don't, I, I don't know what's happening, but I know with the Joss Whedon announcement for Batgirl, I was, I was so like done by then. I was like, "Fuck it, who cares?" Hold on, can I swear on here? Can I, yeah. can I swear? Yeah. yeah, I was like, "Fuck it, who cares?" Uh, they could just they could cast Harley Quinn Smith as Batgirl. I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. And but this movie, I got super excited again for what's coming up. Um, yeah. I feel the same way because it seems like uh, we've been saying this movie needed to be a course correction yes. in a really big way, and it felt like it. 
And I've heard people say this is the re- direct result of Jeff Johns having a more hands-on approach to everything, I guess, but I haven't really had that confirmed or denied. Uh, um, I, would like I, to, like I would like to hope so. Because I love Jeffrey Johnson. Yes, although I hope Flash Season 3 was not his doing, because then he and I have to have a chat. Um, I have to have a yeah. <laughs> just keep going. Just, just yeah. yeah. You, 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 oh, you I totally plan going. on catching up. So. Hmm. I, yeah, that that's that totally. I watched season three, four of Arrow, which whichever one was the bad one. Arlen was basically done with Arrow after season. Oh four, yeah, so. Arlen like. I, I was worried about him, like, every week. I was like, oh, man, he's going to... This is it. Uh, <laughs> I'll never gonna, forget his, his tweet of, it's time for my... He's going to put on the railroad track and just wait. I, uh, yeah, looking back on those old old tweets and old posts, it's like, <sighs> that it's season like, got dark. <laughs> <laughs> Who hurt you, Oliver Queen? Um, no, I, I, I share the sentiment of excitement coming back because... I I kind I kind of liked Suicide Squad, but I liked it for very specific reasons. The rest Same. of it, I'm kind of disposable. Um, mm-hmm. I like Deadshot, Harley Quinn. Um, I liked the way Croc looked. I liked certain things. I liked the music, and then but the rest of it, I was like, this is kind of a mess. Yeah, it's filled with unnecessary pop music. Shouts out to my dude, Hang Loose. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I I laughed audibly in the theater, like probably I do. I started cheering very obnoxiously when fucking he got his head blown up, up and, he and started dropped. cheering. <laughs> I was like, what a fucking jobber. Um, but yeah, and then like before that was BBS, and like I left the theater just feeling so confused. I think one of my friends like I put a post. I was like, I don't know how to feel about this right now. My friend was like, I know this is a big deal for you, so take your time. <laughs> Yeah, I I remember having very similar feelings. Like the next day, it was like I really liked when Superman was up in space and he was regenerating and stuff. I like that. Oh, that, that was cool. To me. I yeah, just, you just reminded me that existed. Yeah, and then I was like, but then I didn't like the the monster looked like the troll from Lord of the Rings, <laughs> which is <laughs> which he, he still does. Still a problem with the film. Um, it's um, mm. not a problem. Come it's on. a it's a real problem. <laughs> you, there real are problem. bigger problems in that movie. You don't have to nitpick. <laughs> no, I'm not even being nitpicky. Like, yeah, Alan. <laughs> no, uh, Man of Steel does have legitimate problems. Also, oh still... yeah, it, there's like it, the entire. It's like, hey, remember when he fought Zod? No, I remember when he caused fifteen nine eleven. So that's what I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like... But uh, I think the future going forward for DC is gonna be interesting because you better you brought up the Flash movie and the Flash movie is like. It, fucking vapor at this point there's nothing yeah that one's doa but as far as yeah but as far as we can tell aquaman is just like oh i'm so excited for aquaman it's like oh nothing's going wrong with this movie Uh, and i've theorized on this show before it's because james wan has access to ghosts and he's using them as leverage to make sure the studio executives don't fuck with i said before he has lee winnell follow him around that nun cops me just spooks people and to get yeah. one. He has access to ghosts. <laughs> he has access to ghosts. He uh he learned how to summon uh demons and shit. That's so that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. He's pals with Valak. Yeah. Is, uh, no, I'm excited about Aquaman because Aquaman they just the, the aggressive push for like make Aquaman cool again is very apparent and I'm okay with it. Oh yeah. Because still to this day people are like, Pooh, Aquaman's so lame. I'm like, you know he could flood this whole country, it's always right? Been cool. He could flood the planet and kill us all. I wrote I wrote an essay in my philosophy class, junior year of high school, about how Aquaman is actually super cool. Now do you mean the orange suit one or the one with the trident for a hand? Doesn't matter, they're both cool. Doesn't matter, they're both rad. Yeah. Okay. Well, since I brought it up uh, over under 50%, he has a trident for a hand by the end of the first Aquaman movie. I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, how, how do you make Jason Momoa look more dangerous? You take one of his hands and make it a trident. Honestly, yeah. I feel like that would be too much. <laughs> yeah, only if they show him getting his, getting his hand cut off and he just has a stump for like 30 minutes. That's pretty funny. But he's like he's like killing people with the bone from his arm. Okay, I want, I want to him, see that movie. Now. I want him to then to then take his own trident, bite the tip off of it, and jab it into his stub, and then start murdering <laughs> people with it. That'd be awesome if like he loses his hand and nothing changes for him. That'd be even more <laughs> badass. He does like he doesn't slow down a bit or anything. He just kind of looks at it and just like goes back. <laughs> like oh, so. Sorry. 
He's like, cool, a blunt object I can crush your face in with now. So good. Um, yeah. I feel so like we're going to see so, some yeah. cool stuff in that movie. I, I hope so. And it's, it, you can see it here, too. They made Wonder Woman, like, along with the very the, the optimism that we had. Like, she came out just looking cool as shit. Oh, shoot. Yeah, there yeah. were a couple of times where she was terrifying. The I mean, scene in the end where she is running through fire or, like, Mega Man X dashing through fire and just, like, yeah. full of people was so cool. So good. So good. And it's weird that, it's weird that all of the, and, like, production cues and, and kind of things they took from BBS, like... I figured they would kind of use something that's inspired by the theme they use, but not base the entire score on it, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I uh, really think that. Okay. And the finale with her and Ares looked kind of visually similar to her fighting mm-hmm. Doomsday. It did. It, it yes. had a lot of similarities. And um, I do like that they... I guess they added a new power, because I don't think the gauntlet things have been there before. Uh, Alan or any other... Has she ever had that specific ability before is that brand new the gaunt where she like, like traps lightning in her gauntlets she caught oh, the, yeah. uh, the lightning bolt yeah she like I assume it's because she's Zeus's daughter that the gauntlets allow her to hold in the lightning and then shoot it back at Ares yeah um, I don't I don't know if that's I've never seen it before I mean I'm okay with it because it looked awesome yeah I'm totally yeah fine. it looked badass and it's I love it I love it so much. Or she just melts um, Harry's face or whatever the hell she did to him. She just annihilated him. I mean, here's the thing. We didn't see a body, so I, I don't think Ares is dead. I think he 100% Well, I mean, I guess when you have godhood, like, it, death is kind of like a, a temporary, <laughs> like, right. inconvenience. It's like, oh, he's in he's in Hades. That's it. It's, yeah. He's not dead. Um, probably. I was just, uh, in the beginning, I was a little uh, puzzled to see, like, bullets... Just like regular bullets killing Amazonians, I'm like, I thought they were supposed to be extra strong. Yeah, I was all right with that. I wasn't bothered by it, but I was like, oh, they're. I guess it helped because, like, I was like, oh, that's a real threat. Yeah. Also, it's uh, what's I feel like I blinked and missed um how the Germans got to Themyscira in the first place. Just because of Ares, or they're no, they're falling pine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm tail spinning here. Her gauntlets, I thought, were a really neat addition to all of them. Uh, yeah. They were uh, really cool. Really masturbatory, too. Whenever yeah. they use them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, of all what? these slowdown shots of her seeing bullets coming at her and then flicking them away was really cool. The tank lifting team was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I love, I love Ares, him, like, telling her to, like, Kill her. She's the worst of her kind. Destroy her and help me destroy all man. Which, again, is like, it's um, weird to see Elithuus because at, at one point I'm like, he's a big physical villain. That's not him. And then while this is happening, he's monologuing in the background. I'm like, see, that's the guy I know. <laughs> right. Like, I, like he's on Fargo right now. And and the kind of villain he is on that is, like, he's the guy who, like, talks. Like, that's his thing. He talks and he says things that are really scary, but not obvious scary where you don't yeah. quite know what he's saying like, like double speak is what he's good at and the way in which you would traditionally think oh shit don't mess with david thulis well, he's and not, he's in not, those he's moments he works better whatsoever no. he is always he i think he has virtually no action movie history at all uh, and the only thing harry, I, potter. harry potter that that comes close to but he, it, i mean most he does is just flick a wand to people but like the only thing i can think of is like again dragon uh, and turn into a werewolf well, that's technically not him. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, it in was. Dragonheart, was on he set. kind of, he, in Dragonheart, he, he was in the makeup chair for eight, eight, for eight hours. Uh, and then in uh, Island of he Dr. Broke Moreau, his legs to make him look like that. It's kind of, oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Uh, and then in Island of Dr. Moreau, he just, like, looks confused for 90 minutes. That's the second day. I forgot he was in that movie. movie. He is the main character yeah. of Island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> oh, shit. And all he does is get carted around and looked and looks at things in disgust. That's his entire job for that movie. I'd hardly call it an action movie. I'd hardly call it a movie at all, but there he is. Yeah. So I like that casting. Uh Danny Houston as always is awesome. But he's yeah. just he's he, you look at him and you go, That guy's striker. definitely evil. Yeah, yeah that exactly. Striker. <laughs> <laughs> One of the three. Right? Yeah. We've had three yeah. striker actors. Yeah. 
No, one I... of them was one yep. of them was black. <laughs> was he? Yeah, I don't first, remember. The first well, one of them was, was uh, Mac from Predator. Yeah, and then the second one is, is Eddie Houston. Right, and then the third one is... Uh... Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Striker was... Um, damn it, I think... No, that no, was Trask. No, he's Hannibal. All of our Trask was black. He was Mac from Predator. Um, right. Yeah, and then in X2, it was... Yeah, it was... Um, oh, damn it, what's his name? It was Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Shit. Fuck. British actor, but yeah, he was he was the first Hannibal before Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. And and the third one, he's Nicholas Holt's sidekick. Well, partner in Fury Road. Yes. Um, same guy. What? The blood. Really? Bring me the blood bag. Yeah. Swiss. Same guy. Yeah, the dude, the the cut mouth. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Yeah. Uh. Buh, buh, buh. That's. I mean, aside from like glowing praise, I don't have terribly much to say about the movie itself. But I think the more interesting fact is like where you started talking about like the DC universe movie map going forward. It's mostly looking bright. I mean, I mean, hopefully, but like we mentioned, like Flash, this... we're gonna have is... him in, in full costume doing shit in Justice League, and yeah. then what? Like, what happens next? Yeah, what? What? Where? Where does he go? Like, it's interesting because he goes back in time to fix the DC EU. Oh God! I hope so. just Bruce, 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 Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it's the key um, to all this. That's a how it should have ended gag. I can't could, take credit for that. Uh, they could so easily fix things with that character. I mean, yeah, uh, if Flash the TV show is any uh, kind of evidence, then yeah. sure, he could go back and fuck they up his retcon. They could retcon whatever the hell they want, and it makes sense. And it'd be <laughs> lovely. It's still not like ruining continuity or anything. Like, it just moves th- things forward, but. Yeah, you know, this thing's where it should be. Basically, a days of future's past for the DC movies. Yes, I don't like, it's it. In most cases, you'd be like, "It's too early for that." But right now, you're like, "No, it's the perfect time." Okay. For that. <laughs> perfect time. <laughs> There's never been a better time. Was well, days of future past everything? Mm-hmm. It's weird looking back at Man of Steel though, because I didn't think we'd be here. Oh and yeah. I, either way, I didn't think we'd be because I saw Man of Steel and I was like, oh, "There's a Wayne Enterprises logo," yeah, and there's a fucking Lex Luger. Uh, like Lex Luger, Lex Luthor uh, logo. I didn't think that was any kind of indication that we'd be going, you know, here. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't think the next movie would be Batman at all. But I, I, think I, I feel like they were like, uh, we didn't get exactly the results we wanted. Get Batman. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it a lot when we do the people versus Batman versus Superman. Um. Which still, that's going to happen someday. Uh, but I, watching that movie again, you can see where it became Batman versus Superman. Like it started out as an, very easily as a Superman sequel, and you can yeah. tell like where they grafted Batman stuff onto and it. Wonder Woman. Like and, she's, I feel like she was and, a later, late, late, late edition. Oh yeah, you can tell because it it feels like they wanted. It feels like they needed a reason to have her there, and that's where I think Doomsday came from. I don't think he was originally there. I think originally it was like a, a nuclear bomb or something, or maybe Bizarro Superman or, or something else. Uh, what if they did? Maybe. Uh, or it was a resurrected wax dummy. Like what? Did Hunter yeah, fall asleep? Well, I'm still here. It was uh, Michael Shannon with flippers. Yes. No, Alan, speak up, though. You've been quiet the whole time. Um, there you can say. Like I said yesterday, does every... Does all of the six have super speed? Yes. I, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, also, Alan, that what we recorded yesterday will be coming out after this, so try not to confuse the audience. Um, time traveler, but I'm confused. Uh, you, you should be. You should be. Um... Yeah. What he asked all the six? All the six in the Justice League photo. 
Um, I know you're under the delusion that Green Lantern will show up, um, but there are only six confirmed. No pieces. delusion. Batman doesn't have super speed. Yeah, he doesn't. He just rich. I mean, if you go, I mean, if you mistake editing in the warehouse fight for super speed, then I Does guess the, the the cyborg have super speed. I don't know. Cyborg. 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 Um, I mean, I'm assuming he's faster than normal. I'm Let's sure I can victory. achieve that. He is yeah, mostly okay. machine. I'm sure he can just, I don't know, grow some kind of uh, Green device. Lantern. My boy, my boy Harry Jordan. He can go really fast uh, hey, if here. if he he makes a a chain with his with his <laughs> ring and then has has my boy Barry, my boy Barry hold on to it and then run. Yeah, but really what, fast if, like that. what if he Blackest uses Knight, the? If you ate. Yeah, but also, what if he uses his ring to create two jet planes, um, and then he uh, makes a like chain bullshit. connecting those two jet planes together, and then he uses it to not fly into the sun. No, you're wrong. What he does, he makes two jet planes, right, and then he stands with one foot on each wing, and then does a split. Right, and then Anya plays. Well, what if? Right. What if he uses puts it to a two bar chain, right? And then he like uses them as nunchucks. That would be that would actually be cool. Yeah, I'd be awesome. Okay I'd be okay with that. Uh, Green Lantern. Guys. Green Lantern. <laughs> okay. Green Lantern on, the while, film. While we're on the topic of Green Lantern. So I I know. I know he's not he's not gonna be in here anytime soon. Is, you know, okay, is there more time. Is there hesitation how. purely based on the Ryan Reynolds movie? Oh yeah. It, yeah, there should be. That seems so silly because it wasn't. It's not the character's fault. The movie just fucking wasn't that great. It's, I agree. It it's Jeff Johns but... and the writers of Arrow's fault. Anyways. I mean, uh, if you wait, ask how? them, they'll still tell you the studio fucked movie. them on that one. Yeah, they did. Anyway. Um, and if you ask them, they'll say we did Green Arrow to make up for. How badly Green yeah, Lantern? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's I don't hold any spite towards anyone who made that movie. Yeah, I don't. But, I don't hold spite against Martin Campbell, um, directed to the best James Bond movies. So yeah, I mean, I haven't seen like I started watching it. I I like forty five minutes into it and was like bored, but I didn't find it offensively terrible. I, just I wasn't <laughs> thrilled by it. Well, I, I I didn't finish it, so that's probably part of the problem. Um, like it gets to a point where. The only person who's actually trying is Sarsgaard, um, Peter Sarsgaard, and what he's doing is it's Jared level Leto levels of terrible. Wait, uh, Hammond? his actor Hammond is so goofy what the, and yeah, so over the top. It's they were, <laughs> they were really put in a lot of like Jeff Johns run stuff and trying to cram it all into that movie. Yeah, that movie doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Okay, well, we'll get to that movie eventually someday. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're going to do a solo Green Lantern movie anytime soon, at least not for a little while. Like, Which is weird, because I, everybody hear about that. The new DC movie logo, like... Yeah, that's what I wanted to bring up. Him. Yeah, yeah he's the first one we see. Yeah. If I remember correctly. I also yeah. want to bring up that, that logo itself, because, like, the final, like, seeing that little logo is like fucking everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah. There are silhouettes of dozens of characters there. There's no There are silhouettes of crazy off the wall like Z level characters. Was there the I didn't I can not catch it very well. Like, I was There's seen... somebody I've seen this took a picture in the theater. MC. Someone pointed at all of them and like like did like the little arrows of like this is this character, this is this character. And there are some on there that are like Whoa, do they have plans for the character? Like, not Howard the Duck levels, bottom shelf, but pretty damn close. Um, okay, fucking, I booster gold's like in the corner somewhere. I have Inside Scoop, Mr. Miracle movie, 2018. Ah, it's a year away. I'm sure it'll come out at the same time Gambit does. <laughs> oh, that poor God. movie, man, we've beat the shit out of that movie across like almost every episode. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that movie. Well, Anyways. they deserve it. Yeah, damn. Uh, no, I'm. I'm. I'm very glad that this movie is as good as it was because 
I yeah. honestly don't know. I think I think I would have quit. Officially. I was at the this end was, of the rope. Yeah, I think I'd have been done. I, yeah. And as big and flash as I was, I don't think you could have gotten anything to get me watch the Flash if it ever came together. If this movie sucked, or Aquaman, I don't know if I would have bothered. I, I'm kind of like in that one camp right now, and I would have I would have skipped Justice League and watched Aquaman probably. I'm, and here's the thing: Wonder Woman's great. I'm still worried about Justice League. I am too, even yeah. with the reshoots. Like I'm less worried though. I mean, because I don't believe for a second that that movie was well thought out. Like, because I know that BBS hit, and suddenly Warner Brothers became very reactive for a couple months there. I, I feel mean, like everything since Man of Steel has been reactive. Mm-hmm. It, I, it's I think all they been reactive. Stopped a little bit. I, I think they slowed down though. I think they have slowed down with being reactionary, especially after they hired Jeff Johns. Things yeah. slowly became less reactionary, and I think Affleck resigning as director, I think that that was Jeff Johns. I think it was really like mm. Jeff Johns told them, we need to actually have a plan, and we need to stick to said plan. Um, I think that's why Flash has fallen apart so many times, because whoever the director was, they didn't want to go with his, whatever the new plan was. And I think that's where all of this stuff is coming from. Um, with the exception of the Justice League Dark, I think that was just a full-on scheduling conflict, as I think I've said before. I also think that was wishful thinking. I, like Anytime Del Toro gets a big idea, a studio shouts him down, and then we're never, it's never mentioned again. Right. And the all you need is kill guy, or I, I don't remember the actual title of that movie, because... Doug Lyman. Yeah, Doug Lyman, like, just complete on schedule conflict. Like he would have done the movie if he had been able to. Wait, all you need is kill. It's uh, Edge of Tomorrow, right? Ed, yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Live, Edge of Tomorrow too. AKA Live, Die, Repeat. He, that movie has three fucking yeah. titles. Ridiculous. Yeah, he left jail. He left Justice League Dark for the sequel to that because of scheduling stuff. So that's the only one where I'm like, I don't think this whole larger plan had anything to do with it. But I don't, well, then, like, I don't know. the future, the future still is weird because like they're gonna move Ire off to what Gotham City Sirens. If that movie even happens, if still. that yeah, if that happens, um, I mean, like you, Andy mentioned Joss Whedon back earlier. That was that same week I thought I was living in a different universe where I was like Tom Hardy's Venom, Joss Whedon's gonna make Batgirl. <laughs> right, not like, the same week, felt... but like it was the same like weird time period where like all these strange announcements were coming. And then I think yeah. like right in the heels of that it was like Joss Whedon's gonna finish Justice League. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. It's, it's, it's been strange. It's been very strange. Um, what a strange, like, production kind of timeline. Because, like, it's I mean, not often that someone steps down and, like, someone else is like, all right, I'm going to finish this movie for you. That, well, it's also weird to bring in happens. the guy who helmed, I guess what you would call, you can call it the competition or, like, yeah. you know, just the other I side mean, of the same coin. It's weird to bring in the guy I who... Think about that. Who it's helmed, like, you know, the movie that is basically caused the reaction from Warner Brothers to get the DC Universe going. Correct. And also, the only movie that is like that movie that has ever been made. Yeah. Uh, I, like, base it, uh, whether you like it or not, Avengers is the first successful superhero team movie where the characters had a pre-existing films and they teamed up and they go on to be in solo films. This is the first time that's ever really happened that way in film. Um, like you can go back and you can look at the monster cinematic. I was going to say the universal, universal movie stuff. monsters is probably like the first. But even is... then, it's just like a couple of scenes. Yeah, but it was nothing a couple happens. Of, like it'd be like Wolfman versus Frankenstein or something like that. It was never like you know. I think Monster Squad is, like, the closest thing you can get to it, and that's not really official, is it? It's, I think it's universal, but it's not the universal universe. Yeah, it's it's this, like, those characters are so, like, no, it's fucking, those characters have existed for so long, I think you can just put them in anything. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Avengers is the first time that you had, like, characters that had their own individual franchises all being moved into one mega franchise. Yeah. The first time that's ever happened, and... So them bringing on the guy who did that is very interesting. It is, and it is the closest thing we've gotten to something like Kirby going from Marvel to DC. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, uh, it's the first time that's ever really happened with these kind of movies. But I kind of yeah. want more of this because I don't want it to be like a competition. I'm tired. One, True. I don't like. I don't like the fanboyisms that get brought up between fans of both sides. It's like, oh, you're you know this side as opposed to me being on this side. It's like, dude, we're all the same fucking side. Like, all this has to work. Right. Like, I, as much as I would love to see Patty Jenkins direct Wonder Woman two, if things fall out between her and DC and she doesn't. And she ends up working for Marvel again, and she directs, I don't know, Black Widow. Um, uh, I'll be there. I'll be there opening weekend for her Black Widow movie. Oh, me too. Um, like, easily. Oh, because then she'd be a traitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, no. <laughs> um, no, it's like, I bring up the, uh, it's like the, the video game industry where it's like, the console wars. The console wars doesn't exist. It's a it's a sales competition. That's it. But like all these consoles have to do well in order for the entire industry to kind of stay afloat. And if we want all these movies to kind of keep coming and kind of keep enjoying them, like all of them have to be at least okay on yeah. both sides. And soon, I think isn't Image getting into this soon or not Image? Um, oh, oh. A Valiant. Valiant works. Sony is trying um, to get into this you know this ball game, which is cool because that's something I wasn't expecting at all. Yeah, I don't know about the partner that they chose, gonna, but um, it's gonna fall like a fish out of water. Oh, I think it's gonna fall on its fucking face because no <laughs> one, uh, you you know, you walk into a room full of people and you go, "Who's Iron Man?" And most people say, "Hey, Robert Jr." If you walk into fucking a middle of the room and ask the same thing about uh, XO, XO Man of War, there you go. You'd be a or, sea of confused faces. I know. I mean, yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, try pitching Bloodshot to somebody. Go ahead, just try it. <laughs> I, I, try say, making, I, I, brought up, I brought up image. I'm like, try pitching blood strike to people. They'd be like, what? Right. And then uh, well, that's my favorite terrible comic. I can't wait till we have dueling bloodshot and blood strike movies because one of those movies. <laughs> hang one on, of those hang movies. On, hang on, hang on. We're never getting a blood strike movie. Oh no! It will happen. It Not will in happen. This universe. If it happens, dude. I... It'll. I would, I would take some kind of daring bet if that movie ever comes out because. No, I agree because I don't. I don't think Image is ever going to work on film. I would I grow an extra foot before that movie came out. <laughs> Probably. That's the chance um, of happening. Yeah, I don't know. DC. I guess I'm looking at this much brighter. Um, I I Definitely. think that depending on because again, there's going to be a lot of news about Patty Jenkins. And her role in this universe. And people were speculating all through the week about, well, they didn't sign her for a holding deal for a second movie or a third movie. And she could ask for a billion dollars. Or she could ask for final cut on the next two movies. Or she could ask for an increased role in the rest of the movies. Um, like I would like to see her be more actively a part of this movie universe. Oh yeah. Um, as one of the trusted people to go to, because she seems to pretty much, for someone who's never directed a superhero movie, she got well. I mean, or two aside, I guess, but that didn't really happen. Um, she kind of nailed it in her freshman run. Oh yeah. Like, it, she, like if she this, this looks like an like an effortless win for her. If this, if this becomes a situation where not effortless, it's her and Jeff Johns running. She made the it show. seem effortless. Is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels effortless. It does feel like this is a movie that she always wanted to do, and it, it just needed to happen. Like it was already there. You know, very, you know, it's, it's a very Logan. It's where thing. like uh, they ha that dude had a vision and he was finally to do it. Yeah, and I feel like Patty Jenkins had something for this movie and she was just what permitted to do it. Snickety, 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 snoin. What? 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 What did you say? Snickety snickety snoin. Snick. Jesus. Weapon X, um, baby. Here's the thing. I want to say you'll never be invited back, Andy, but the problem is I know you will be invited back. Yeah, he will. <laughs> <laughs> now, a break on our usual chemistry is uh, very welcome. Um, yeah. Especially of this kind. But, uh, no, I, what was I saying? Shit. I don't know. I um, think we're kind of we're, we're kind of spinning a little bit. So, I don't know. Does like anybody have like any strong feelings? Like, because I feel like we've said just about everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean our strong feelings, genuinely, like consensus-wise, that we all liked it. Although I don't yeah. know how Alan Filler feels because he's like gone. Yeah, Alan's dead. Yeah, I killed him. It's, I'm uh, taking his life force. That's this yeah. is 
This is another one of the conditions. Alan, <laughs> confirm, or de- confirm or deny that you're dead. This is condition 3.1. Alan? <laughs> Alan has to be dead. Alan's dead. He's, Alan. a, he's a life force zombie from the film Alan. Life Force. Alan can't be huh. dead because he's recording the show, so I kind of need to know if he's here. What do you mean? Alan's right here. He's been talking the entire time. Alan Haro. God damn it. Oh my god, they fused. God damn it. Why? Uh, uh, but I, w- I do have some, a couple of strong thoughts, like some things okay. I didn't mean to get out earlier. Well, first, uh, I do want to say while we were having the lightning gauntlet conversation, uh, I looked it up. It is a power that Wonder Woman has in the comics. No. Oh. Okay. Uh, she's only used it a handful of times. Uh, it's apparently because the gauntlets are forged from Zeus's shield. Oh, okay. And. Anyways, but um, moving on, uh, a lot of like why I've been so excited for the previous DC movies was you know these characters that I love are finally like becoming more in the, coming more into the mainstream. I was especially excited for Suicide Squad because like lesser known characters were, you know, gonna finally be on the big screen and stuff like, uh, yeah, like my yeah. boy Captain Boomerang like, and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, you know, I feel like the past few times have definitely fallen flat and I haven't really been able to share this thing that I love with other people. But, um, like, uh, I had a very strong reaction to the, uh, the entire, um, no man's land fight sequence, like through that and through the fight through mm-hmm. the entire town where I like start crying because like it hit me that this movie is actually great. And I'm actually finally able to share, like, a character I love so much with people who, you know, don't read the comics like I do or right. aren't even, really, really familiar. So I think that was really special to me. And also, I saw it with my sister. And, mm. you know, this this movie is obviously, like, excellent for women representation and stuff. Yeah. And so that was really cool just to see, like, how she was getting, getting even more excited than I was. And, like, I love Wonder Woman and just... That hero being there for her was, and this is my older sister, it's not like she's like eight or something, but it was just really awesome to see. That's the reason that. why I'm glad this is as good as it is, because let's be fair, and I don't care who calls me an SGW or a cup, <laughs> go fuck yourselves, I don't care, your opinion means nothing to me. Uh, it's about fucking time that women had a superhero movie that they can rally behind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is, yeah. it's all very appropriate, and anyone who has a problem with it can shut the fuck up and leave the planet. That's all I oh, yeah. I'm tired of it. Yeah. I'm tired of the complaints from these people. Um... I'm tired of the, the toxic uh, environment you guys present to this whole thing. Like, let the fucking women have this. They deserve it. Um, yeah. It's been, a, it's been a men's club for a long time, and it's, you know, it's, it's time for some, you know, it's time to share. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's it. It's, it's only fair. I know uh, this movie and uh, Fury Road had a really positive impact on my sister and a lot of other people. Uh, Good, because that's uh, something, that's, uh, Fury Road was the movie I was thinking of while yeah. watching this film. Um, n- not just because of the Furiosa thing and the like, the women empowerment thing, but the action sequences were so good. The Fury Road got me from visuals from the get-go, and the action was getting me, but the canyon shootout in Fury Road was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, and mm-hmm. I had tears rolling down my face because it was the most it was, <laughs> like enthralling. I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. Like, I was leaning forward, holding my chest... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, mm-hmm. that movie. Like was it was over, and like I was like an old woman. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, goodness oh, gracious, my, my heart. Yeah. Um. So many good things about this. Uh. And I, also, like, this is a great movie for women, but I love that they don't. There, there's a lot of stupid things they could have done. They could have made Chris Pine just a dumb alpha male jock, um, which I really appreciated because that that's an easy thing to do. It's mm-hmm. an easy thing to just have a really strong, really well-written female character who just steals the movie, as she should, and then have just the worst male character on the planet Earth. Just like mm-hmm. a completely empty, vassal human being with no purpose for being there. And thankfully, and no. Chris Pine brings an instant amount of likability to most of what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, so that works right out of the gate. And he's and it helps he's his character. so good in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And it, does, it helps that his character is very likable, too. And he's not just doing Kirk, which is a nice no. thing, because um, he, he he tends to do that in a lot of other roles. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't do that in Hell or High no, Water. Like in, like, he didn't do it in Princess Diaries too. Oh I God! Mean, uh, no, like, 
when they're when they're shouting at each other in the trenches and she's like she's like everyone's dying here and he's like listen he's like this is just how it's been he's like we're stuck here he's like this is how mm-hmm. it unfortunately works and it's yeah. him trying to tell her the reality of the situation and her just like no there's got to be a better way and i love that chemistry they had where he's like no this is kind of the sad reality of everything and she's like no fuck that yeah and i love that he's a realist like he takes the situation as it is like when she's kicking ass in no man's land he doesn't just like sit there whining about no he's it. he sees yeah. the opportunity to hit, make him and his men move forward and make progress on something he said moments earlier where he's like no one gains an inch here he's like we're stuck here and all of a sudden she runs out and starts wrecking shop and he's like holy mm-hmm. shit we can go 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 everybody go yeah yeah he was very like understanding of her and respected her a lot which i think was so important yeah yeah so he, he didn't he didn't treat her like an alien either. He was like, yeah, you're a little, you know, you don't come from here, but you're still, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah like... And and the humor is well done. It makes sense for the characters. And I think that's another problem people have been having with the DC movies is that when they try to do humor, it's stilted and it doesn't make sense and it's I, kind of dumb. I laughed I laughed at two gags particularly in this movie when one the secretary bit where like everything she said with that found was entertaining. Like mm-hmm. what was yeah. it said is like she's like you're taking the most beautiful one I've ever seen, you're sticking her in that. I, I love when the she, glasses uh, line. What, yeah. Or when she she appears to um oh, I can't remember his name. The dude with the fez. Oh uh, yeah. Samir <laughs> <laughs> he sees her he's like oh my god look at this work of art <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like knocking or like no he's like he's like he's legitimately stunned he's like my god <laughs> yeah it's like i've never seen anything so perfect uh, he, it, yeah it's like he really has just seen like a painting it's, that changed his life yeah it's charming and admirable and not slimy mm-hmm. yeah i liked his whole troop even that sniper who has only a few minutes of screen time like you're like wow that dude's seen some shit <laughs> yeah, and and to get back to her, like her, her, she has lines that really brighten, like brighten the moment oh, completely. Yeah. And like when when he says, "I I didn't do anything. I was a complete mess. I I was no help to any of you. I should leave." And then she says, "But who would sing for us?" And like the ways My that heart. she says that, it's just it's so good. Like she knows the exact right thing to say to somebody to like make them feel better about themselves oh i do want to bring this up because the, the amount of optimism we have here i'm glad we have this wonder woman and not injustice wonder woman because injustice wonder woman is the fucking oh, worst i hate holy I hate, shit hate it wow because like no i love the injustice series all the games yeah but like but wonder woman was... wonder woman is the true villainous presence in injustice she is the actual factual worst character <laughs> from a morals perspective in the entire lineup, she manipulates Superman's loss and uses him as a fucking hammer. <laughs> yeah. Basically her whole mm. character arc. And they bring it up in Injustice 2 in, like, a really weird way where, like, Scarecrow hits her with the fear toxin and then, like, she has a whole hallucination based on the idea that she completely manipulated Clark's fears and loss and used him as a way to gain power. It's kind of yeah. gross. <laughs> weird. Like, yeah. Well, it makes her look like piney after superman where she's like oh clark i need you cow whatever and it's like yeah it's not really wonder woman yeah I mean, that's like all, the en- all the energy to making like a likable woman ca- a female character went into harley in that game which is fine yeah, yeah. it's a problem but, i have with the flashpoint universe wonder woman as well oh yeah i don't is, like oh yeah either. she's it's it's yeah. like making she, her and she superman. doesn't make sense to me yeah at I all mean, superman's oh, like yeah, uncomfortable yeah well, that's, I think that's the problem everybody had with Superman and BVS, where it's like he is... Uh, super, the Super Best Friends brought this up, where Superman in BVS is terrifying because it's flaky. And he is just... Yeah. He is, they, they tell you, straight up, that he is one step away from being a complete mass-murdering yeah. dictator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's frightening. It is. It's scary, because yeah. they basically... He says, like, oh, you t- it, she was all I had, and now she's gone. And that is implied that well, that's what sends him over the edge. That's all it would take for Superman to go full evil. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it's not that's not supposed to be what he is. And in, in, in Justice, they get away with it because there's an alternate universe. But this is supposed to be like, you know, your mainline movie universe. You shouldn't immediately set up Superman to be like, oh, yeah, oh, he could be evil in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't walk out of BVS thinking, so wait, who was the good guy in that movie exactly? Well, it didn't help, but like, and like we mentioned the, one, the optimism here. Superman in BVS, like they said that montage of him saving people, he looks sad the whole fucking time. Yeah. He, he should never be smiling. Looks happy doing what he does. He should be. He should be happy helping people. 
He should mm-hmm. be. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it goes back to a problem that is the biggest problem with Man of Steel, which is Jonathan Kent being a uh, Anne, the Rand- worst, Anne Randy. The worst, the worst dad ever? Yeah. yeah he's I mean, bad. fucking Martha Kent's not that much better either. Like, in BBS, I she's mean, like, you don't know this planet anything. I'm like, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't save me from the tornado, son. Don't save me. And it's like, fuck you, dude. Like, oh, fuck you, dad. Skateboarding is not a crime. I would laugh my ass off if Clark hopped on a skateboard and fucking went and saved his dad. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> That's a better version of the movie. <laughs> um, his dad out of tornado. Like, like, there's so many better ways to have done that scene. Saves him from the tornado, and then he dies of a heart attack anyway. How's about that? Hmm? Easy way to save that scene. God damn it. Now I'm pissed at Man of Steel again. A movie that I, I, a movie that I will that. defend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope so. Maybe we've done enough comparisons. Um, I think we're also good to wrap, though. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody. This has been the Phantom Zone. Hey, well, on our first, our special guest, say his name, any kind of social media he has. Are you saying, talking to me, or just on the other guys? (laughs) Okay, I was just, I don't know. I I just felt like I was the guest. I should be on the uh, host, too. Okay, whatever. I'll pin my shit. Uh, Yeah. See, you can follow me on Twitter at Andy Sites one one seven, A N D Y S I T Z one one seven. As also my tag for Instagram. Uh, you can also friend me on Facebook for at Andy Sites, or it's Andy Lee Griffin Sites. Mm-hmm. Got two middle names, named after a myth- mythical creature, the Griffin. Uh. Yeah, I think that's my social media shit. Add me on Snapchat, also at Andy Sites one seven. Wow, none of us are plugged over Instagram and Snapchats. We're we're wow. falling behind here, guys. Damn. Uh, we, just plug, we just plug our terrible Twitter accounts. Uh, my friendster uh, is uh, <laughs> Cutie Daddy one fourteen. You can find me on Tout. Uh, you can <laughs> on check me out on uh, LinkedIn. I'm trying to find a job. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll edit anything for you. Do you have a live journal too? I'll 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 spend a million hours editing video for you. Uh, hey, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm. Thought bubbles. Um. I'll I plug. Do it for free. I'll plug my stuff. Uh. Uh. At a Haro on Twitter, you can see me doing all kinds of stuff there. Occasionally yelling at Andy. Um, not so much now, but yeah, when he was sometimes, only sometimes. Yeah, so sometimes he'll say something so weird and ludicrous that I have to react very angrily. But most of the time, we're name, pretty chill name dudes. One thing. <sighs> one thing. Andy. Yeah. Andy, no, Andy. I. I. What's something I've upset you with? <laughs> I'm Is still in like, theater. Like, sad tweets. No. In, Right before BVS was coming out, and you were insisting that you'll like it no matter what was going to happen. Oh yeah, and I I was, was legitimately angry. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> you thought I was joking? Yeah, I, I was thought you were legit- joking. Like yeah, the Yak said, bit came out yeah. from that, but that's the Ar- only. Ar- Arlen said that. Yeah, what, what if Yakety Sax plays? And I'll be like, I'll be in the theater. I'll look to my sister and be like, Yo, this is exactly the movie I would have made. God damn it! Like, yeah, it's my shit. It just shows three hours of Superman snapping Zod's neck. Yo, hell yeah, this movie's great. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> Doing good. It's pretty good. Uh, hey, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Westbrook Commander. I don't tweet too much, but I'm trying to do it more. <laughs> uh, you could follow me on Twitter, at Davenport. Uh I mainly shit post, as I say every week. Uh, you can find my writing on the horror. E3 weekend is upon us. You'll be seeing a lot of stuff coming out from us. Um, uh, my favorite comic book event, E3. Yeah, my favorite comic book event, E3. <laughs> uh, and uh, assuming he's not dead, uh, I believe it's at the Alan Mir. At the um, Alan Mir. Yeah. Yeah. On, shit show. On the on the twits on the tweets. Um, yeah, Los Haro. Yeah, lostharrow.wordpress.com for all your writing stuff, reviews, movies of things, video games, all that stuff. Uh, Phantom Zone, podcast.wordpress.com for this podcast and more. 
all the different ways to share it to your friends. Uh, this is your first time listening. Yay. Uh, we have other movie specials if you're not interested. Time. Yeah. If you're not interested in <laughs> CWTV, lots of other movie specials. Uh, we reviewed Guardians of the Galaxy recently. Uh, LXG, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, will be coming out very shortly. Um, so, yeah. Go go listen to the backlog of movie specials and other stuff. Yay. What episode is this currently? This is the eighth movie special. Yeah, there's oh. like 33 episodes in total. Wow. We're, yes, close, we're quickly crossing the 50 mark. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, this show just got even better with all the star power you brought yeah, in tonight. Oh, yeah. Got Andy, it's about, Andy, about time Andy you guys Owls. have a big name guest. Quit fooling yourself. I've been here the whole time. That boy. All right, everybody. On that yeah. note, if anybody has anything to say. Biggest head, smallest penis. What? Oh, well, he said it first, everybody. Wow. <laughs> That's what? a good way to close. Goodbye, everybody.